I've got a lot of requests from subscribers asking me do a tutorial on how to draw. They really want to know how I do my stuff, and I figured, okay, let's do this. Let's I'll show you guys a crash course of my technique. Now, keep in mind that Photoshop, like many other programs, have like a hundred different ways of doing one thing, and that my method might not be the best method for you. It's just the method that I've kind of come to, and I, it's the most efficient for me. Now, I'm going to be using Photoshop CS6, and when getting started, I like to set my document up with a 17 by 11, or vice versa, inches, and 600 dpi. This may cause a huge file size, but there's a lot more benefits. That's really the only downside to this. The benefit of this size is that it's pretty much printable at any size. You can make it a little bit bigger with the double DPI than what it needs. Uh, the 600 makes it where we can scale up just a little bit. And there's a lot of extra benefits that I can't really explain just yet. We'll get to it when we start drawing. Now, as for brushes, I usually use the default brush. Uh, I know a lot of people are like, well, how do you get your lines? And I'll show you in a sec, but this is literally my settings. I may have a shape dynamic and have the size jitter with pin pressure. With the pin pressure selected, whenever I draw, the, the harder I push, the thicker the lines. The lighter I push, the smaller the lines. And uh, over here, you see this tool right here? I don't know if it's in the other CSs. What it does is it toggles the opacity the, uh, you know, how dark the color is and how light the color is. And I find that very useful. Fun fact, did you know in Kirby's Adventure, before the game starts, there's a tutorial on how to draw Kirby? Because he's so simple and easy, we're gonna draw Kirby. So, the final outcome should look something like this. As you see here, we only have one layer at the moment. And let's go ahead and prep our file. I use prominently about four layers. I use a sketch, a defined sketch, colors, oops, and I use ink. And I'll explain each layer as we go. First, let's do the sketch. And uh, we're going to use a pink color because it's Kirby. Yeah. So start. Uh, Kirby's pretty simple. Let's draw a circle, draw some eyes, and then you got Kirby. Uh, we're going to be doing kind of an action pose. So. By the way, I don't know if you guys ever heard of this technique, but it's called crosshairs. And what it does is uh, when you're drawing a face, it helps you kind of like line up things. Uh, we know that the one eye is going to be in this section, one eye is going to be in this section, and the mouth is going to be here. So we're able to pinpoint which way something's looking. For example, here, let me draw a couple of balls. This character's looking down, this character's looking up, this character's looking at us. Pretty simple, pretty cool. I, li I like doing that pretty standard technique. Alright, so we got Kirby here. Pretty light sketch. Uh, that circle's pretty good. But yeah, um, alright, so let's move on and go into our defined sketch. What we do is we lower the opacity of the first sketch. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move to our defined sketch and we're going to define the sketch. We're going to go through here and correct some stuff that wasn't necessarily right. You don't have to make the lines perfect. Just keep in mind that like we're going to be drawing this again. This is just our chance to like clean up any mess ups, get rid of any proportional errors, make the thing a little bit more on model. All right, so now we got our Kirby sketch. Let's move on to our ink. What we're gonna do is get rid of our original sketch and then we're gonna lower our opacity. That way it's easier to trace. Alright, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to go ahead and skip this color layer and go straight to ink. And uh, let's talk a little bit about how I draw my lines. Now, a lot of you guys ask, Steven, how do you get such straight lines? And I think some of you guys, when you draw, you kind of have this thing going. Now, it's going to be really hard for you to uh, draw perfect lines if you're drawing like this. And the reason why is you want to draw fast. The easiest way of getting around that is drawing fast. These are confident lines and these are not so confident lines. These are like shy lines. These are, uh, you want confident lines is what I'm trying to say. So instead of drawing really slow, which as you can see I'm trying to fight myself from drawing fast. Draw fast. Your lines will always be straighter, neater, 
Now, uh, some of you guys may notice that. Some of you guys might notice that, like, I'll draw something, Control Z, draw it again, Control Z, draw it again, Control Z, and that's because with faster lines, they're not as accurate, and you need to. And but like for me, it, I think it's much easier to Control Z, redraw, Control Z, redraw, Control Z, and get it perfect on like the third or fourth time than spend a lot of time trying to correct it, you know? Again, that's just my preferred method. Now that we got Kirby here, let's go ahead and draw his features. So we're going to draw his arms, his feet, and his mouth and such. I'm going to wait to draw the actual circle because I got a really cool technique on how to draw a perfect circle. So let's go ahead and draw him. Alright. So we got all the features. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make an additional layer now. I know I said we're only going to use these, but here's a quick tutorial on how to make the perfect circle in Photoshop. So take your circle marquee tool and try to get about the same size. If you can't get it the same size, do it bigger. It's always easier to scale down. And what we're going to do here is we're going to switch to our white, fill it in, and we're going to be using um, ignore layers. So there we go. Control D to get rid of the marquee tool. And what we're going to do is blending options. Right click the layer, blending option, and then choose a stroke. And what that does is it makes a black outline. Well, make your black outline about the same thickness by changing the size as your other lines. That or a little bit bigger. Typically the whole body usually gets to be a little bit thicker. We're going to make an additional layer underneath it and we're going to merge down. Now we have this black line and white, and as you can see, the white kind of destroys our drawing. But it's cool, because you can use the magic eraser tool underneath the eraser tool section, and boop, there we go. Now we just have this awesome straight line, which now we can form fit our Kirby. Now, perfect circles are awesome, but no one can draw a perfect circle. It looks a little unnatural, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to warp it by going to edit, transform, and warp, and just kind of make it a little bit more human. Fitting into places, warping it a little bit, just so it's not perfect. Hit enter when you're done, and now let's, now we gotta get rid of some lines. Okay, first let's get rid of our defined sketch. Goodbye. Now I got a Kirby. And now we got a little bit of mess ups here, here, and here. What we're going to wind up doing is merging our ink layer with this layer. But first, let's do a little bit of cleanup. First, let's delete some of the circle here, because we know that this hand is in front of them. And the rest of it, we're just going to erase this excess. And with the circle being on a separate layer, we can go ahead and erase with ease without actually having to worry about destroying our perfect circle. Now let's move on to coloring, and this is going to be pretty cool. Alright, uh, what I like to do first is fill in the entire color layer. And the reason, why, oh, the reason why I chose to do this method is because when you fill it in with the uh, all layers selected, when you take away your ink you have this missing lines, and uh, sometimes when scaling down it, it doesn't necessarily translate well, and overall it just becomes kind of a mess. So. What I like to do is fill in the whole thing, and then delete what's not Kirby. Actually, I think Kirby needs to be a little bit brighter. Alright, so now that we got our fills, we got a bit of an issue here. We need to make this pink, the uh, cheeks. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move back to the ink layer, because that's where they're drawn. And we're going to lock the transparent pixels. Now, this technique is really awesome because, say you need to color outlines and you have black ones and all your outlines are on one layer, well, you could simply, with this locked, color on top of only the colored pixels on that layer. So say that we really want to make a dark pink outline for everything on this layer. Done. I think that's awesome. Though we need to go back and color our cheeks. Alright, so let's go back to our color layer, and we're also going to lock that one too. And the reason why is because it makes shading a lot easier and a lot more fun. 
because check this out so we can go in here lower our harshness and we can get this soft shading that Kirby's so used to and we can just kind of curve through here see so just draw that and boom okay so we got a little bit of issue with other colors which is fine what we can do here is use the magic select tool magic wand tool and select only the pink and then just kind of go through and now we have the softness that Kirby's so used to uh, we can also go over here and do the same thing uh, let's do the same thing with the uh, shoes we're just gonna select both and then let's get a darker color. Do the same thing for the mouth. And finally the same thing for the tongue. Now we have a very angry Kirby. Now let's do some red lighting. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our lightest color and we're going to we're going to go back to our harshness setting and we're going to lower the the size but we're also going to toggle the opacity and we're just going to kind of go around him and and give him a nice rim light we're going to touch up the eyes a little bit and uh, let's go ahead and give a rim light onto the shoe Kirby also has a little bit of a shine on his shoes. Let's go ahead and do those real quick. One of the added benefits of having such a huge file is that when you zoom in, you'll notice that not all my lines are that clean. There's a little nestiness here. Uh, the lines aren't as perfect as they look. This right here is a little bit of a mess up. But when you scale down to web size or like how people are going to view it, it looks pretty clean. And scale, what it is is when you scale down, your pixels compress, and it gets rid of a lot of that messiness, and that takes away a lot of time for cleanup. And uh, that, that's probably one of the biggest benefits for this, and the main reason why I do this method. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, tell me if you found it helpful or not, and uh, do you guys want me to do more? I have a really cool idea for a pixel tutorial that I'm going to be doing. But uh, if you guys like want to know more stuff, let me know. This is kind of fun. Uh, kind of difficult, but kind of fun. If you guys enjoyed this and you plan on doing something, leave a video response with like what your outcome is. Or give it to me on my Facebook or Tumblr. I'll give links in the description. But I would really like to see what you guys make. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys whenever I make a next video.